That was uh, that was sort of the feeling that I had when I fought um, Cotto. You know, even friends that I had that were Puerto Rican were like, I don't know, bro. I, I kind of like Cotto, you know? And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, really, bro? Like, you don't even know the guy and you know me. Welcome, fight fans, to another edition of Boxing Scene's Top Stories here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. I am George DiMatellis. Don't forget to download the Pro Box TV app for the full Pro Box TV experience where you get to hear the knowledge and you get to hear the gems dropped by our champions. We got Chris Algieri and Pauli Malnagy joining us here on Top Stories. Well, this weekend, this Saturday coming up, it'll be Mexico's Saul Canelo Alvarez against Puerto Rico's Edgar Berlanga, adding another chapter to a famous rivalry in boxing, Mexico versus Puerto Rico. By the way, there's a great article on BoxingScene.com from Karen Mulvaney about this great rivalry between Mexican fighters and Puerto Rican fighters. Now, the fight that might have set it off took place back in August of 1981 when Salvador Sanchez won a eighth-round knockout victory over Wilfredo Gomez. And some other great fighters have participated in this rivalry from Julio Cesar Chavez, Felix Trinidad, Oxford de la Hoya, and Miguel Cotto as well. Pauli, let me start off with you. What is it about this rivalry, Mexico-Puerto Rico, that makes it so special, so intense in the world of boxing? You know, I want to say I want to say it's the fan, it's the fighters, but it's more so the fans. I think you know the 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 countries, the these places on Earth, Puerto Rico and Mexico, have a lot of great fighters. But there's a lot of places, there's several places in the world that produce some really good fighters. But with Mexico and Puerto Rico, it's not just that they produce excellent fighters. It's also that the boxing culture is so strong, so passionate, so emotional, uh, and the fan bases are so immersed into the into the fights into the into their own fighters so when you have two passionate fan bases coming together i mean it, it creates a lot more fireworks and it puts a lot more emotion into the fight a lot more on the line for said fighters involved in the fight so you've got a culture both cultures where they produce excellent fighters so if you got a if, if you got an excellent fighter from one culture an excellent fighter from the other culture and they happen to be colliding at a high point in their careers you're going to have both fan bases and that's I, I, that's what i think the makes the rivalry what it is it's the fan bases that that both come with which is a huge huge passionate fan base you match that together with two fighter with a mexican puerto rican in their prime in their at the, at the at their best in a huge fight and you get more bang for your buck you get a bigger fight than than maybe uh two other excellent fighters who are uh from other cultures you know because of the fan base so for me yeah it's the fighters of course and it's the boxing styles of course but it's the fan bases for me the fan bases really make the rivalry what it is yeah, Chris, what do you what's your take on the Mexico Puerto Rico rivalry in boxing? What makes it so unique, so special? Yeah, champ, I think you're 100 percent spot on with that. It, it's it's the people, it's the fan bases. But um, even just to add on to to your point, they're passionate people, right? So so the fighters are passionate as well, and they 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 owe it to their fan bases. They owe it to their passionate fan base to go out there and get the win. It becomes uh, a tribal team style of 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 event, um, similar to how. You know, Mexican fans and well, I mean, fans all over the world when it comes to football or, or soccer, you know, in this country, I mean, the, the people get so passionate about it. And you're you're essentially playing, but in our situation, you're fighting for national pride. So there, there's this nationalistic idea behind this rivalry where the Mexicans don't want to lose to the Puerto Rican fans because both of them think that they're the best in the world. Uh, they create the best fighters. The Mexican uh, is legendary for, for, for their, their, Bexi, uh, their, their boxing prowess. And, and Puerto Rico has so, so many amazing superstars in, in their in their lineage as well. And if you ask if you ask a Puerto Rican who makes the best fighters, they're going to say our island makes the best fighters. If you ask a Mexican fighter who makes the best boxers, they're going to say we make the best boxers, of course. So uh, you've got that that that, that competition to, to to always step up and 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 get ahead of the other. Um, <laughs> and your 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 fans are behind you, man. You don't want to let them down because uh, when you let them down, they're going to let you know. And so there, there's not only that that idea that they're both excellent fighters, not only are there are their fans passionate, but the fighters themselves are extremely passionate to show out for their fans. Yeah, certainly Saul Canelo Alvarez will love to. Well, he has already etched his name in the hearts of boxing fans in Mexico, and Berlanga will look to do that for Puerto Rican fans as well. Now, Julio Cesar Chavez and Edwin Rosario fought, fought back in 1987, 11th round TKO victory for Julio Cesar Chavez. That kind of poured gasoline on the fire to make this rivalry more intense. Is there a fight that stands out for you when it comes to Mexico, Puerto Rico, Pauly? Um, you know, for me, growing up, I saw uh, Chavez Camacho 
and uh, De La Hoya and Trinidad. Uh, those were big ones as well. Uh, later on, also uh, Trinidad and Vargas uh, was another one. And then, of course, Cotto. Cotto with Margarito had two fights, uh, you know, and that's where there was the controversy that swirled in, in those. So those are the ones. But the, the first one that I can remember that sort of was brewing and that I can remember well in my lifetime, I, you know, Rosario and Chavez, I don't have a lot of memories of, you know, uh, although I know it was a big one. Um, I was too young to really understand everything, you know, but, but with Chavez and Camacho, you know, that, that was, a, that was one where there was a lot of, there was a lot of talk about it and, and, uh, and you could sort of start to feel the, the emotion behind the, the Puerto Rico and, and, and Mexico fan base, even though Camacho essentially was a, a New Yorican, you know, but he had a, he had a, a big fan base Camacho and he was a uh, very popular and well-known. And so that was a, uh, that was a big one, but the destruction of, uh, of Rosario by Chavez was a really a big statement because Chavez uh, and, and Rosario were really two destructive type of fighters. And so it was basically like two trains collide. And that's a, that's a fight that you really, really uh, see the demolition of a fighter that I'm not sure that Rosario was ever the same after that. Yeah. By the yeah, way, for me, Yep. No, sorry, go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say that, uh, uh, yeah, similarly champion. I, I don't remember, you know, the, the Chavez Rosario fight. It was, it was before my time or it was a fight that I wasn't that familiar with. I've obviously gone back and watched it, but for me, the very first, like one of these fights that I saw in terms of rivalry is the one that, you know, we started out with Salvador Sanchez and, and, uh, and Wilfredo Gomez. I got a funny story with that. Um, at the time I was, you know, I was, I was a martial artist coming up. So I was in a, in a, you know, karate dojo, but we had a, a local boxing trainer who was working out of the dojo and training people. And him and I just became, we would chat about fights, about old fights. And I was probably uh, 11 or 12 at this time. And I was uh, fancying myself a bit of a historian, even at that point when it came to boxing, I was getting books out of the library. So I was impressing him with my knowledge of, of past fights and fighters. And I remember one day he asked me, he goes, Chris, he's like, you, you love this, huh? I go, yeah, absolutely, Rob. I, I, I really love boxing. I love everything about it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm reading about it all the time. I'm watching whatever I can get my hands on. He goes, well, listen, he's like, I got a VHS tape that's got some incredible fights on it that you need to see. Um, he's like, but I need this tape back. This is back in the VHS days. You know? So he, he's like, I need your, your Bro, address. Oh, those VHS days were rough because you sometimes yeah. you didn't get the tape back. Yeah. That's what he said. He goes, I need your address just in case I don't get this thing back. I'm going to come find it. <laughs> so, so he ends up giving it to give me this 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 uh, VHS tape. Salvador Sanchez and Gomez is on there. Um, uh, there was also Duran and Esteban de Jesus was on there. I think both of them were on there. That, those were fantastic fights. Um, but yes, yeah, there was a couple Salvador Sanchez fights on there. But that Salvador Sanchez with Fredo Gomez fight, my goodness! I mean, the the, the energy was insane. That the technique was incredible. The power. And then I saw somewhere where they, I don't know if it was an interview or I read it, they were talking to Salvador Sanchez and, and they they said, they're like, oh, in that fight with Gomez, you know, everyone kind of considered Gomez as the puncher. But you you got the stoppage. You you know stopped him in the eighth round. Like, what was the difference? You look like you came out very, very different. And he just simply said, in this training camp, I did a lot of heavy bag work and I hit the heavy bag a lot. And I just remember, I remember hearing that. I'm like, man, that's so cool. It's so, so, so basic. Hey, how'd you, how'd you, how'd you hit so hard in that fight? I, I just got to the heavy bag in training. And, uh, I, I thought when I was a kid, I was like, man, I gotta hit the heavy bag. <laughs> Cause I gotta, I gotta learn to punch like this guy. But, uh, yeah, that, that's the first one of my memory. And then like you said, champ Vargas Trinidad was a big one for me. Cause I love, I loved, uh, Fernando, um, De La Hoya Trinidad was huge. That was big for everyone. It was a massive event. Um, and this is why I hated Trinidad during his career. Cause he beat two of my favorite fighters in, in De La Hoya and Vargas. Um, I've grown to love Trinidad since then. But um, but yeah, th th those are the ones that really come to mind because I was in that era. We, you know, Paul yourself as well. We we were watching those live. You know, those are those are massive events in our sport uh, during during our time. And then the older ones, the older fights are really just going back and doing homework. Yeah. By the way, Ted, I, I mentioned the the Chavez fight against Rosario and and pouring gasoline on it. Chavez said before the fight, Puerto Ricans talk too much. Rosario has a big mouth. And the people around him have big mouths. And then Rosario said back, I'll send you back to Mexico in a box, you coward. So that certainly fueled that rivalry there and that fight there between Rosario not, and Chavez. Not mincing words, those two, huh? Yeah, back, for back sure. before, everybody got offended, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was yeah, certainly thicker skin back then, for sure. VHS, that just took me back a whole bunch of memories there. But uh, let's talk about, Paulie, you fought Miguel Cotto, Cotto, excuse me. You know about the, the Puerto Rican vibe and how... 
it seems like a whole nation is against you when one of their fighters is steps into the ring against you. Talk a little bit about that. What it was yeah, like to go I, up against think, that part of the big rock? I think both fan bases make you feel like you're not just fighting the opponent, you're fighting them too. You know, that was uh, that was sort of the feeling that I had when I fought um, Cotto. You know, even friends that I had that were Puerto Rican were like, I don't know, bro. I, I kind of like Cotto, you know? And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, really, bro? You don't even know the guy and you know me. So so it, it's very, very passionate. And looking back, like you can really respect how, how, how much these fans get behind their fighters. And I think it's for, it says for both sides because it, 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 it borders on the on the side of you know fanaticism, I guess, which is what a fan is, right? But but also uh, obsession, you know, like we, you know, fans will go into a into denial about these fighters. They're, they're so passionate about them, you know, and and, and it's so in some ways it's annoying, but in some ways it's really really uh, um, what makes the sport so great, you know, because then you get a an arena full of fans like this, and it's loud and it's vociferous and it's. Uh, it's really, really wild, and it's really, really crazy. Uh, despite then, I'll give you a story about the De La Hoya Trinidad fight. I remember with, the, with that goes along with this uh, sort of deniability here. De La Hoya Trinidad. I was, I was, I had to go to the nationals the next week, and I, so I had to travel Saturday. You had to be there Sunday for the registration. You had to be there Sunday morning, and it was at Disney's World of Wide World of Sports. It was a national tournament. It was a national PAL t- tournament in 19, 1999, and so. I I get to the hotel and they don't have an option for the the Hoya Trinidad fight, bro. I mean, this is the this is a Disney World, the wide world of sports. They you can't order the fight. I mean, I was dumbfounded, especially that you're hosting a boxing tournament the next week, so I couldn't watch the fight. I, could, I didn't get to watch the fight until I returned home. The next morning, there were fighters that came like early on the early AM flight, you know. And one of them I remember was this Puerto Rican from New York. And, you know, everybody's debating the result because at the time you don't have YouTube, you don't have social media. You don't really know when you're just hearing about it. And you're hearing like there's grumblings about maybe a controversial decision. But again, this is pre-technology of today. So you really don't know. You're just hearing rumors. And I remember. Yeah, there's, no, there's no message boards then. Yeah, you're, not, yeah. like, you're, remember, you're not checking Instagram. I, I remember going to the registration for the tournament and and, and this kid is there. And uh, his name was Carlos. I remember. He was actually a Golden Glove champion of several times in New York. And uh, he was Puerto Rican. And he goes. And I don't remember, so he goes, and I was like, Carlos, you know, because I knew him from New York. I'm like, what happened, bro? He goes, oh, come on. He goes, fuck, what turned that one? He goes, this guy was running all over the place because he was there. He had seen it. He was the night we, we came in the morning. So I'm like, all right. So, you know, De La Hoya was running too much. I guess uh, he lost the fight. I get home, dude. De La Hoya won the fight, bro. I mean, he lost the last rounds. He gave them away. Mathematically, De La Hoya won the fight, you know? <laughs> it's like the plausible deniability when you're such a hardcore <laughs> fan. You're like, you're like, oh, dude, he ran. He lost the fight. I mean, he lost the hearts of the fans by the way he finished the fight, but I thought mathematically he won the fight, you know? But again, the the partisanship of, of both fan bases that borders on deniability and whatnot, it's uh, it's both beautiful and annoying, but when you're involved, it's annoying. But when you're on the outside, you're like, oh, man, this is so cool to watch. This is fun to watch. This is This is what makes the passion of the sport. Yeah, I, I remember watching that fight with my friends, and we were all screaming at the TV, like, stop running, De La Hoya. We wanted Trinidad to knock him out so bad. It didn't happen, but still added to the drama of that fight. Well, speaking of drama, Chris, let me start with you with this one, because Antonio Margarito fought Miguel Cotto, won the first fight, and then Cotto got revenge probably for the entire boxing community, along with Sugar Shane Mosley, for beating Antonio Margarito. What do you remember about those two fights between Cotto and Margarito? Yeah, well, the first one was just such a hellacious beating that Margarito put on Cotto, and um, it was unexpected. You know, I I think that you know going into that fight, you know, I, Cotto should have should have been the favorite in most people's eyes. He's more technical, more technically sound. Um, he was such a destroyer, and and Margarito is definitely you know he was a big, free swinging, very very durable guy, huge for the weight class, um, heavy handed guy, and was you know was uh, in, a great fighter as well. Um, but you just thought that the class and the skill set of Cotto was going to win the day. And, man, Margarito was just Early on, it was. Him. Early he on, was. it was. Yeah. Well, Margarito doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, Margarito's got a chin like 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 iron, and he was getting hit and uh, getting out class, but you could see Margarito edging closer and closer and closer. It, it was a very, very dramatic and fight. The sand was coming out of the hourglass little by little. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. And you could see Cotto wilting under the pressure. Um, and just, just, just getting beat. And it was hard to watch because he was really taking a bad beating. Um, so then, you know, he gets stopped, obviously. And, and Margarito, you know, wins a, a huge fight and, and an upset in many people's eyes. And then you got that Shane Mosley fight in the middle there. And Nazim Richardson catches Team Margarito uh, t- 
tampering with the, 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 the wraps and finding that he's, he's loading his gloves. And um, there's this huge controversy before the fight. And then they actually fight. And Shane, I mean, dog walks him. Yeah. Beats him all over the ring. Uh, you're watching it and you're like, yeah, good, good. Take that beating because, you know, you're obviously you were trying to cheat. And then you then then the question always becomes, how long has this guy been cheating? Mm. You never get caught the first time. So then you start thinking about the Kodo fight. Like, oh, man, the Kodo fight. And I was actually training in Oxnard at the time when the Kodo Margarito rematch was being made. And um, and they were they were trying to make the fight, but Margarito was having eye issues. I believe it was from the Pacquiao fight. He got his orbital broken really bad, and he had a lot of damage around that eye. Um, and they were trying to make that fight happen, and they might have fallen through. They eventually did make it happen, and Kodo was able to 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 get the revenge and and put a, a, a vicious beating on on Margarito as well. But that was one of those fights. I don't care if you're Puerto Rican or Mexican. You're a, you're a boxing fan. You are rooting for Cotto yeah. to to get that back because there was there's always going to be that shadow hanging over or looming over that fight, whether his gloves were, were loaded or not. Yeah, Pauly, did you want to add anything on to that? The whole situation of Margarito, Cotto, and the, the raps and was, Sugar Shane? That was pretty wild, though. You know, uh, and I gotta remember, you start thinking about all the fights Margarito had before that. You saw the yep. one that with, with the... Cintron. It, it, if he, yeah, with Cintron, I can remember Sebastian Sergio Luan. Martinez. Yeah, but I can oh, remember. We the, blasted his ear off. That's right. Sebastian Luan's whole ear was hanging over yeah, his head. Yeah, he blasted, he punched his ear off. Wonder, yeah, that was crazy. I wonder, you know, if that was had anything to do with it. Like, dude, I've never seen anything like it, bro. Sebastian Luan's ear was almost completely off. Oh, it was yep. crazy. Oh. It was crazy. Man, that was gnarly. Oh, man, taking a trip down memory lane here on Top Stories with this Mexico-Puerto Rico rivalry in boxing. That will have another chapter Saturday with Edgar Berlanga trying to defeat Canelo Alvarez in Vegas. It should be a great fight. And, of course, we got great stuff from our champion. Chris and Paulie, thank you very much for your time. We always appreciate you here on Top Stories. And don't forget, scan the QR code, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Download the ProBox TV app where apps are available. One more day before Edgar Berlanga faces Canelo Alvarez, another chapter of Mexico versus Puerto Rico. And, of course, Wednesday Night Fights continues October 9th here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. I'm Georgie Metellus. This is Boxing Scene's Top Stories. He's the pride of Guadalajara, the Mexican maestro, the unified super middleweight champion of the world, Canelo Alvarez. His challenger, undefeated knockout artist and pride of Puerto Rico, Edgar Berlanga. It's prime time. Canelo versus Berlanga, plus Lara versus Garcia, Saturday, September 14th, live on PBC Pay Per View on Prime Video. For more Pro Box TV, scan the QR code on the screen or go to the App Store and Google Play. Pro Box TV, your boxing channel.